Hi guys, Tom here. I want to talk to you today about making mistakes while you're practicing and why they aren't the end of the world. Stick around. Hi guys, so I love it when we'll be in the middle of class or even an examination and a student will create, a, a, they'll make a mistake and they'll create a wrong motion or they'll go in a wrong direction or they'll do the wrong chiburti when they should have done a flick chiburti and they've done a, a different type of chiburti or they had the incorrect foot forward and they give you that look of horror like, oh boy, what did I do now? And we always say the same thing here, keep going, don't stop. Um, the reason you did that error or mistake, and I love doing the quotation marks when I say mistakes, it's because something made you do that. Something in your instincts told you to just move in that direction. And that might not be a bad thing. If you look at the history of sports, okay, and you look at some of the greatest plays ever made, whether it's football or soccer or, 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 or baseball or basketball, Usually when some incredible, memorable play happens, it's because of a variation of something that someone did. The ball didn't bounce in the direction it was supposed to, or the receiver ran left when he should have ran right, and then the quarterback had to compensate for that and, and, and do something different, um, especially in soccer. You want to talk about variations in movement. When that soccer ball gets sent in front of the net, the greatest soccer players in the world can work with just about anything and do a light little touch and there goes a ball into the net. And the guys and girls that are really good at it are the ones that are well-trained. What does that mean? Do you think they do the same thing over and over all the time? Probably not. They probably work on variations, which some people could interpret those as mistakes. So what does, that, what does this all mean? What it means is if you, if you guys are training and you guys make a mistake, just keep going because maybe that's what should have happened. Maybe that's something you can work on in future sessions. You know, some dojos tell the students, if you stick around with us for 20 years, we'll show you the kaiwaza of a certain secret form, which just means you cut in a different direction or it's a different kind of cut. And, you know, we get students going a few months in, we'll start having them do variations because we don't want anyone getting, you know, pigeonholed with the same type of movement over and over. Now, granted, it's important to do the basics over and over. It's extremely important to do your basic waza, your basic kihon, the same way every time. I can't express that enough. However, you also have to train yourself that when you make an error, you don't just shake your head and, and put your sword away and, and, and start over. You keep going with it because that happened for a reason. Whether or not it was something external that caused you to do that, uh, mistake or something internal maybe caused you to make that mistake. Maybe you got distracted mentally. Maybe the student next to you got a little bit too close and you just, just shifted a little bit or maybe you cut that way instead because you don't want to hurt your, your, your classmate. These are all vital things that happen to us every day outside the dojo. We constantly get distracted. We constantly get manipulated, whether it's external or internal. And if you work with those things that happen to you in, in sword class and just keep going till the end and do not stop and make it work out, so to speak, to your goal, that will translate outside the dojo as well. I can't tell you how many times, now as a married man, all you other married men out there and married women can agree with this, how many times have I said the wrong thing to my wife in front of her and her friends and then I had to... Uh, hurry up and say something else to recover and something about maybe how she looked in a dress or maybe some food that someone made and, and I kind of said I didn't like it and then I said uh, something else to make a quick recovery. Well, I'm really good at that because of my sword training, okay? <laughs> I guarantee you that. Now, that's a fun example to talk about, but there's some other examples in life that aren't so much fun that happen to you. Variations happen to us all the time. And if you practice these variations, it will help you. It'll make you a much better martial artist as well. I'll give you an example. So if we look at the first few waza in the art that we practice in Asian Ru, what better place to go to with a variation than direction? 
the first four waza that we practice, the first one's in the front, the second one's this way, and the next one's that way, and then we go to the back, and we all end up in the same place. Well, there's a good example of that right there. And then the next one after that is called yaigaki, and then you add an extra cut, which means you're, you're adding an extra step. So we're going further now, away from our finishing point, away from our goal. And then the one after that, we're on a 45 degree angle. Hmm, now what does that tell us now? Now we're doing angles. We just did four directions, you know, front, back, left, and right, and now we're introduced to more distance, and now we're introduced to an angle. I had a really good friend of mine who's an incredible martial arts teacher tell me, you know, the only waza you really need to be a good swordsman is the first four or five. You just work those, and you're going to develop some incredible skills. Just work on some variations with it. And when he told me that, I couldn't wait to get to the dojo and practice that. So what does that mean? Well, just because you're told in class to adhere by certain movements for certain waza, absolutely, you have to do that. But that doesn't mean you can't change things up a little bit. If all the, I mean, after all, this is a combative art, historically. So if all the other combative arts, like, like boxing and, and, and wrestling, if they just stuck to a list of techniques and just did them the same way every time, well, if their opponent gave them, threw them a little curveball, did something different, well, if they're not prepared for that, then they're not prepared for that. So how do we do that with sword? Well, it's really not that difficult to do. The first thing we could do is change our direction. So I may want to do uh, my, but you know what? Maybe I'll do it on a 45 degree over in this direction. And then maybe after I do my initial cut, well, maybe I want to incorporate a little bit of yaigaki in that, but maybe I want to do that in a different direction over here. And maybe I don't want to do a step. Maybe I just want to come around and do my cut here. And then maybe I want to do a step and do my chibuti. And then as I do my noto and I bring my foot back, well, maybe I want to turn around in a different direction and then do my block here. There's an infinite amount of combinations and different variations that you can do. And by training like that, that will help you stay true to how the waza are supposed to be done because you've already experienced those variations. And this will help you outside the dojo if someone throws something like at you like a curveball where you have to adjust what you're saying or what you're doing. And even when you're driving, Yaido is an incredible art and it really, really helps us with life. But you have to practice different variations. But at the same time, stick with what your teacher wants you to do. The fundamentals are there for a reason, to give us those fundamentals. But that doesn't mean when you make a mistake, you can't go with it and learn something from it and still complete your goal. Thanks a lot, guys. Again, thanks so much for your support. Please check out our website and our distance learning program if you're interested. And we'll see you next time.